Hi, my name is Chris Mouflard and I'm a project engineer at Vico Software. Welcome to the Schedule Planner video training series level 7. We're going to set up and review cash flow curves. In this vignette, we're going to discuss what are cash flow curves and we're going to identify the risks that we can perceive in project delivery by reading cash flow curves. With Vico Schedule Planner open, we're going to need to we're going to need to first set the expense events for each of the individual tasks within our schedule. Let's take the form slab on grade as our first example. Within the task settings, in the number 9 tab, we have expense events. Expense events are not received, but are paid. By default, everything is paid at the end of a task. However, it is more realistic that we'll pay the subcontractor on a monthly basis. We can define this in the payment periods as monthly. Automatically, the, the software will generate the total monthly payments over the course of the task. Let's now navigate to the side navigation bar to the cash flow view. Currently, our perception of this project is quite negative in that when we look at the brown line, we have a certain amount of money that's going to be expended. Whereas if we look at the blue cash flow line, this is the amount of money going out. This means that we are yet to make any money on the project. We are going to need to add an income event, which is essentially a payment which will be received for the completion of a task by either a degree of completion or by location or a lump sum payment. We can do this by heading to the project tab and to the income events. We can add a lump sum income event by selecting the add function, providing a name, a date of the payment. In this case, we'll use a fictitious date of January 2012. Let's click OK to see what happens when we have an influx payment. And we'll give a total payment of $500,000. As you can see, the green line indicates the total income that we have received. When we compare this to the cash flow, we can see that we have now made some money but are yet to break even. Let's head back to the income events in our project tab to see how else we can plan payments. Alternatively, we can define payments by task. We can do this by first breaking out the hierarchy of a task and choosing the payment type, which can be, be between locations or degree of completion. We'll assume payments by location in this example, and we'll check the coordinating boxes. We can now add target income payments for each of the locations. Let's use the example of payments of $300,000. and a final payment of one million. We can see that the payment delay is automatically a 14 calendar day, which suggests that the payment will be received 14 days after each bill is sent. Finally, let's break down the drill sink cage and cast piles and use a degree of completion with three separate payment events. We'll use payment costs of $50,000 here in this example. Let's click OK and see what happens to our cash flow forecast. As we can see, the target income has boosted dramatically the positive cash flow, suggesting that if we follow the green target income line, that our target income will be far greater than the total number of expenses and the required target cash flow to complete the project. Further, we can analyze this and see that we should have the potential to generate considerable project just after the completion of the first couple of activities. We can now use the income events report to track the total number of income events for each of the tasks that we have provided payments for. In this vignette, we've learned that LBMS provides a basis for accurately forecasting and controlling the gross and net cash flows for a project. We can use Vico Schedule Planner and the LBMS theory behind it to provide firm links to the completion of locations or degree of completion of a task to progressively trend and forecast the project's cash flow.